Welcome back. You're watching 101. We're speaking with veteran actor Nadim Sawalha. Tell me about that first time you got to London. You you joined the BBC, started writing uh, Arabic dramas for them. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then you got sort of pushed into acting, or at least you chose that path. How did you end up acting? Well, I came actually to study acting. I studied acting, but it was when I finished, I was so shocked uh, culturally and intellectually. I didn't know where the hell I was, quite honestly. So I thought I'd better go and hide somewhere where I can think about what I've just done, the crime I've just committed, which is studying drama. So uh, I found the BBC, the Arabic service, and they trained me and I, I joined them and I was with them for about eight years. And then I thought, ah, why did I come to England? It's to work with the British, with the Europeans. I'd forgotten that, you know, that's what I came for. So I resigned and uh, I said, I'm gonna go out and, and look for work anywhere. How tough was it, that initial stage? Well, it, it, uh, it was very rocky, because you came across a lot of, a lot of, an awful lot of dodgy people, you know, agents in small rooms and so, who were scrutinizing you, you know. It was, but one day, my father-in-law, Bobby's wife, was working with MGM Special Effects, and he was passing through uh, their casting department, and he heard, uh, this casting director looking at this photograph and swearing at this actor saying you let me down you rotten and through the and my <laughs> my father in law said who's that she said this actor he left he left this beautiful film and gone to do something rubbish here he said oh he looks like my son in law she said is your son in law uh, an actor he said yes she said bring me a photo of him tomorrow so he passed by on his motorbike <laughs> and took a photo of mine when he said he looks exactly as the, as the missing actor. So I went to see it was a, a, a touch of class with Glenda Jackson and George Siegel. <clears throat> and he asked me to peep round the door and I peeped round the door and he said, oh, it's very funny that. <laughs> so where have you been all these years? I said, well, I haven't, I've just come on the market. <laughs> Did you feel that was your first big break? Was that the defining It was, yes. yeah. Because, because I got on with him, I went to Spain uh, to, do, to do the film and I knew nothing, you know. I'd do my shot and walk away and Glenda Jackson would grab me and say, hey, you haven't finished yet, come back. Because <laughs> you have to do the other side, you know. Um, and I got on very well with him, lovely, lovely old man. And, he's, and he said, look, I'm gonna give you three close-ups and you won't stop working for a long time. Was it true, is that how it worked? He did, yeah. And after that, you know, um, I got a, a lot of work. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. What was the most uh, enjoyable role you've played? Captain Abu Raid. Right. Captain Abu Raid, it's like you take a journey in the sun, you know, in the heat, and then suddenly you found a tree and you sit underneath it and you feel cool. <laughs> Captain Abu Raid. What is it about that? What is it it's about, about that role? Uh, it, uh, first of all, <clears throat> I was glad to be acting in Arabic, my own language. Uh, secondly, I was glad to be with my own people. And it's about an airport janitor, a very kind, uh, vaguely spiritual old man, who one day finds a hat in the rubbish bin, a pilot's hat, and absent-mindedly put puts it on his head. And one of the kids in his street follows him and says, are you a pilot? And he says, no, I'm not. He says, come on, you tell us about your adventures. Where do you fly? Have you been to Kazakhstan or something? So he, he shushes them away, but eventually he says, you know, his wife dies, he's, he's lonely. So he goes out and he starts telling them stories and then he goes into their lives and discovered that one of them is being beaten up almost daily by his father, you know. And he smuggles him to a rich man's home to live and he ends up being a pilot. So this is, this is the short of it. It's, it's, it. it's about children and it's about hope for the future and how we can help each other. And he's a wonderful, wonderful old man, this character. You were in a series that I grew up watching. It was one of my favorites, Space 1999. Yes. 
and uh, weird things you get I into. Know, it's <laughs> like, and I and I love that. I grew up watching that. And then you also uh, more recently you're in a docu docudrama playing Muhammad Al Fayed in. Uh, yes, I was. I was in um, yeah, pr the princess died on the last days of a princess. I played Muhammad Al Fayed. That, that's right. Dodi is dead. Um, I'd I'd uh, I'd played him in a BBC Two uh, play about him and Ian Hamilton. <clears throat> you know the court case which he won, uh, the slander and all that, uh, and the BBC made a doc, uh, you know, a drama doc of it, and I was chosen to play him. When I played him, they gave me about 90 pages of research on him, and I thought, my, this is a gift. So I sat down and I wrote a one-man show about him which I toured in England, and I did it in Jordan, and I did it uh, in Syria, and it, it was wonderful. wonderful. How, how did you, I mean, how did you prepare to play someone like him? It's a very controversial figure. He's a very controversial yes. character in British uh, yes. society. Yeah. Well, you see, I think the BBC director and producer realized that probably culturally uh, and geographically, intellectually, I am the nearest actor to him in London. Really, I felt him. I knew him. In the BBC, I worked with dozens of um, uh, Egyptian actors and writers, and I grew to love them and understand their sense of humor. And Muhammad Al-Fayed's sense of humor is enormous, but it's not understood by Europeans. They don't know what he's talking about. Did you get to know him? Did you? I mean, did you get any yes, feedback? Did yes, you get after, feedback on? Only after I played him, people said, you? "Try and meet him." After I played him, somebody took me to lunch uh, at Harrods. And the head waiter said, hello, <laughs> he's there. He, he called him up. He said, the actor who played you on BBC Two last night is here. He said, all right, tell him I'm coming down. Give him a pudding and a coffee, and I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did he respond to that? He came down, and I met him for about 10, 15 minutes. And it was wonderful, because he just, he just was so immediate, as far as I'm concerned. I understood him so well. And he gave me so many clues to his personality that I went back home. And and then I, I finished writing the, the one-man show. And then I wrote to him uh, saying, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And he said, you're not going to laugh at me, are you? I said, no, I'm going to have a good laugh with you, I hope, you know. And then one day, uh, I was doing the show, I think, at the Soho Theatre. Um, this tall man approaches me and he says, spot on, dear fellow, spot on. I said, who are you? He said, I'm the old man solicitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You got the <laughs> I said, well, what do you think? Is it jail, you know? <laughs> he said, no, it's wonderful. In terms of the way the movie industry has changed in all the years you've been there, you've seen it go, uh, you know, from this very sort of classical, what I yeah. would consider at least a classical environment, yeah. to you know, special effects and action and yeah. so on. How do you regard the change in the industry? I've been I've been lucky to to, to sustain a certain bit of insight into it because I, I get into films somehow, which is still like the James Bond films, you know, big big film. I, I, I recently did Syriana here in Dubai, and then I did. Um, Nativity in Morocco and Italy, and these are still, uh, it, it's when you get into television that you realize uh, the enormous change that has happened to the profession. De television drama is something, something different. Feature films, still, if you can get into the few that they are being made, you can still sustain that tradition. Of, of respect and 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 caring and you know time given for the shot and the lighting and everything um, and these three or four films that I've done recently have been wonderful you know reviving for me because they remind me of the days when I did the James Bond and things like that and the Wind and the Lion with Sean Connery and Candice Bergen and all that. What is the one role out there you'd you'd like to play that hasn't been offered yet? What what role would you like to do? I think one of, one of the people I have always liked was King Faisal, you know, of Iraq. He died in 1933. He was Lawrence's companion, you know, because I think, Lawrence I think, yeah, I th Lawrence of Arabia. He was his companion because I like these. Uh, and I, I did another one-man show called Osama, but another Osama, Osama who lived uh, a thousand years ago. He was a noble Muslim uh, gentleman who fought the Crusaders, but he fought with such humor. He looked at the other person with such humor, not with venom, not with any, sh no shrieking voice. No. I like these, uh, Osama bin al-Munkid, he's called, and 
the King Faisal. I like I like these people because they bridge the cultural gap so intelligently, you know, and make it merrier to know the other. <laughs> Nadim, how would you like to be remembered? What would you like your legacy to be? I've worked with the best. I've been lucky to work with the best, I think. And they were lucky they worked with you. Thank you very much for talking with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs>